Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Taylor Show. Here we are. Episode, you know what it is. Huh? How about it? Sipping here. Got all the beverages. All the beverages for this episode. We got a tall water and we got a cocktail made by uh, Kate. It's a... It's uh, vodka. It's uh, some kind of cream liqueur that doesn't have cream, but it's made from... It's like a liqueur made from the lactose of from cows, which sounds gross. Maybe it's gross. I don't know. Some guy just gave it to me, um, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like a cream. I guess it's like a Bailey's. It's kind of like a Bailey's. So it's vodka, it's this, and then an ounce of vodka. Um, and then she shaves some, I don't know if you could see that. She saved some uh, chocolate, some dark chocolate on top. So uh, it's quite delish. Oh, wait, no, I, I said that wrong. I said vodka first, didn't I? So it's vodka, it's cream liqueur, and then it's Godiva chocolate liqueur. That's the third thing. So it's pretty good. Kind of just tastes like the Godiva chocolate, but more um, alcoholic because it is. Um, probably shouldn't be drinking it. I'm coming down from a sickness if you can hear it. It's not COVID. It's not COVID. Do I know that? <sighs> no, I don't. All right. I didn't get tested because I felt like a cold and it's going away now. And I taste everything. Okay. I taste everything. Don't have body cramps. I have none of the symptoms and colds still exist. Okay. They're still out there. The flu exists. The colds exist. Strep throat exists. It's not strep throat, but my throat does hurt a little bit. Um, God, it's the fucking worst, man. When you wake up and you like you, you just swallow. Like, why when your throat hurts, you want to swallow more? And every time you swallow, it just fucking burns. And then you're like, I know I should drink water to make it feel better, but then you start drinking water and it doesn't. It doesn't feel better. You're like, what? What can I do? And I'm at that point where like. Who the fuck is texting me? Um, I'm at that point, like, you know, where you're, like, you're blowing your nose, and it's just, it's just rock solid up there. Like, there's nothing coming out, and you just, you know, you literally almost blow your eardrum out trying to get any, anything out. And then, you know, the we all know the one side gets locked up, and then out of nowhere, it shifts over to the other nose, the other nostril, and then that gets locked up. But, like, yesterday I was at the point where this side was so locked up that you couldn't get anything out. And then so you just had the slow leak, like the slow drip leak that you couldn't control. And you're trying to, like, you're sitting there, you're talking to people, you can just feel it start to move. You're like, oh, no, I got to get a tissue now. And I don't take, like, medicine. I don't take, sounds like a brag. I don't take, I don't fucking take medicine, bro. I don't believe in it. I don't believe in modern medicine. I do. I just don't, like, I don't, I don't, okay, maybe I don't. Like, Advil and stuff. Advil, Dayquil, all the ills. I, I just don't, I just don't think they do anything. I don't know. Maybe I don't, I I've just never, it's all, it's all felt like placebo effect. Who, somebody has a great joke, and I forget who it is, but it's the base, if you know who it has this fucking joke, please tell me, because this is going to drive me insane, but basically it's like, you know, we take this pill for this symptom, or whatever, for this sickness, and we take it with water, and then we take another thing, and then we take it with water, so really, I, he thinks it's water that is the real thing, and it's just the water comp like it's it, you know what I mean? I'm fucking it up. I need to look this up. Um, pills don't work. It's the water joke. That's not gonna work. Uh, no, nah, not gonna work. But anyway, that's kind of how I feel. Like I don't think it's ever. My God, my head hurts. Oh, oh take an Advil. I'm like, it, it, no. It's not going to do anything. It, the only thing it's going to have that I need is just just time and water. I just got to wait this fucking thing out. It's the worst. I'm the worst sick person. I am. I get so 
just irritable and tired and complainy. It's fuck. It's bad. And that's who I've been for the past uh, couple days because, you know, I had a crash. I thought it was the season changing. You know, maybe once a year I get sick, but like, it was. Kate's parents were in town, and anytime their parents are in town. I drank probably twice as much as I normally do because we go out and then the drink gets offered to me and I can't deny a drink and uh, that make that sounds like I have a problem. I don't. I just I don't deny a drink and so we get drinks, we get another drink and then we get a lot of food and there's salt and fat and acid and heat and and it just all combines and we do that for three meals a day for like a four day stretch and my, and then you know we come home and of course they still crush the pint of Ben and Jerry's and then my body's like I, we can't take it we got to shut this thing down you're getting sick and so that's what happened we were go 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 eat 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 drink 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 and then they left and then I got sick. That's what happened. And here I am still fucking drinking. Um, yeah. And not only that, I'm still doing everything else I fucking do and not sleeping great. So my body is just hanging on by a fucking thread. And I developed, I apparently, I, I developed some sort of, like, my jaw joint is inflamed it's inflamed and it hurts I I can't open my mouth so I went to the dentist and they were like yeah well um, have you taken on any like new stress are you stressed out are you you know what's going on and I'm like yeah all those things are you not sleeping great yeah that too you're stressed out you got a lot going on yeah well always (laughs) and uh Basically, she said, what's happening is, like, I go to bed, which should be a very nice, peaceful, relaxing thing, but apparently for long stretches throughout the night, my jaw is just locked shut. Like, it's just clenching. It's just, these muscles never relax. I'm just chomping and grinding and biting down like I'm trying to, I don't know, like I'm in a Saw movie trying to get through, you know, one of the things. I'm just, uh, that's how I sleep. And so it got inflamed because the muscle and the joint are irritated and they never get to rest. And I was like, yeah, that sounds uh, sounds like you nailed it, Doc. What do I do about it? And she goes, chill the fuck out. I mean, she didn't say that, but the gist of it was, yeah, you got to chill. You could use a warm compress. That's another thing that I've never thought works, a compress. Yeah, nice warm compress. Okay, a wet, hot rag. I mean, it feels good for like a second, and then it goes away, you know? It's like the the warm compress rags are like the hubba bubba chewing gum. You know, you get you get a little bit of something for two seconds, and then it's done, it's dead, it's over. That, ice packs are not great. They're either way too cold or not enough, and then and everything gets wet, you know, apply it the ice, and it feel again. It feels good, and then you're like, "This stings." Is it actually helping? I don't know. That's how I felt about the compress. She's like, "Yeah, you could do a compress before bed every night, and and just kind of massage your cheeks." Which I have a hard time just you know washing my face before I go to bed. Like I'm the the, the idea that I'm gonna heat up some hot water and soak a rag and then massage my cheek. Like I don't have. I, I'm stressed because I don't have time for the shit that I need to do. Like, you think I'm gonna ha- I can do this? You know? It's not it's not gonna happen. But the main thing she said was, all right, the downtime thing. Like you gotta maybe just a couple hours before bed, you gotta make you know, your downtime routine has to you know, stay off your phone, stay off screens and stuff. Now what I do, I have that uh, you know, like the the um, the blue light thing, the blue light filter where your screen goes like orange, I have that on all day. I just forgot about it. Like, it, you know, f- at first it's like, oh, it looks weird, but then you just get used to it. And so I rock that all day. So no fucking blue light for me. Blue light, I'm out. You know? You should try it. It's starting to feel best, uh, better. But, the, you know, just that on top of the sickness... 
uh, and then the, you know, bad eating and stuff. It's just been a hellish, uh, couple days. So, um, slowly starting to come out of it. I was just getting to the point today where I could start to blow shit out of my nostrils. Um, so that's where we are, but that's the price you pay for going out and doing things that you enjoy. It was a lot of fun, you know? We went out to we went out to get we got good food. We went to uh, quality eats and got you know fucking drinks and and food and and hung out. It was a good time. It's good fucking time. Um, and now I'm back to eating, you know, shitty bodega sandwiches. That's that's my life right now. I don't mind bodega sandwiches. Like, some of them are good. If you find a good bodega that makes it right and, and just cares a little bit, it's not bad. But the biggest fucking pet peeve, you gotta... I am probably talked about this before, but you gotta cut the sandwich all the way through. Bagel places, too. You're in on this, too. You gotta cut the sandwich all the way through. I don't know where you all went to school where they taught you to cut the sandwich 90% of the way and just leave a little bit attached at the bottom... Who is that helping? It's helping no one. It's helping literally no one. All it does is I unwrap and I think I have my sandwich and I go to pull apart the pieces so I can eat like a human and then all of a sudden the bottom half of the bread just gets ripped in half because you you kept it isolated together. Like you don't need to do that. That's why you wrap it in tinfoil. So you end up just ruining... The sand, it's a lazy cut. You spend so much time doing everything else for the sandwich. You, you made the, you know, you fried the bacon or whatever, and you cut the avocado. You put the turkey in there. You squirt the mayo, and, the, oh, I got a good tomato, and, and this and that. You munch it all together. You rolled it. You packed it real nice, and then you're just going to do a half-ass slice down the middle? It ruins it. It just, it, 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 you don't need it. It doesn't have it happen as often with wraps. It's mainly rolls, heroes, that kind of thing. But it just fucking bugs me, man. If I ever, ever had a sandwich shop, that'd be like the number one thing if I was like trying to get investors involved. And they're like, how is your sandwich shop going to be different than any other sandwich shop? I'm going to be like, I'll fucking tell you. Because if I say I'm going to give you two halves of a sandwich, you're going to get two halves. All right? I'm not going to have you, the customer, make your own half. You know, doesn't that annoy you? Is that only annoying me? Or like the same with pizza. Like when they cut it into eight slices and then you try to rip it apart and it's not fully cut. Dude, make sure it's fully cut. Sharpen up your little wheel thing, you know? Sharpen that shit up. I want I want the slices all, all separated. Crust cut all the way through. If I have to pick it up and then rip it apart and then it starts to come apart, so angry. That would be the different thing that I would do. Like go all or nothing. You either cut it all the way through or you don't cut it at all. You know? I don't know. I try to be loyal. There's a place by where I work where I go and I get a sandwich and the guy's really nice, but... Um, I don't know. I always ask for like, I get like a chicken club and you know, a club comes with bacon and dude, I swear to God, whatever he's given me, it's not fucking bacon. It's not, I'm not even sure what animal it comes from. Cause you know, bacon, it's like, it's on the thinner side. It's got, it's got that bacon fucking taste. There's nothing else that tastes like bacon, but bacon and bacon smells like bacon. It should always smell like that. But dude, this it's like I don't know. It's 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 like half bacon, half pastrami, but not that good. I want to ask him like what animal is this? Is it goat? Is it lamb? I've had lamb bacon before many times. It it doesn't seem like that. It just doesn't it doesn't respond to heat and cooking the same way that I've seen bacon respond. Like the way, I don't know, like he puts it on the sandwich and it just bunches all up in the corner of the sandwich and it's like super like fatty. 
but also not. It's like it it's it's oily, but it's there's no like fat side. You know, like bacon has like it's it's a lot of fat, and then there's like the strips of meat within. This is like all meat, but it's like soaking in in grease or something. I don't know what the fuck it is, but uh, maybe it's an animal that I don't know. You know, maybe I'm gonna maybe maybe this bodega is gonna, you know, spark the next COVID. Because isn't that what happened? There was a bat in a uh, in a store, and uh, and then someone ate a bat. That's not the real story anymore, isn't isn't it? Haven't it, isn't everyone like kind of agree that it's the lab? <clears throat> is that where we are? That uh, that COVID came from a lab it does kind of make sense. It's the Wuhan lab. It's in Wuhan. They're testing on coronaviruses. But that was like a that was a big thing that could get you in trouble back in the day. God, I have to fucking blow my nose. I can't. I can't do it. And all the tissue. Oh, you gotta do like that deep inhale. You gotta like maybe it'll come. But maybe if I force it back in the other way. Then it'll get rid of it. It won't. Ugh. Um, but yeah, I don't know what that was that I was eating every day. But I've started to try to make my own fucking shit. I got salad stuff. Because I, I mean, I was ordering out every day. It was a problem. I I had a salad today at work and this guy was like, uh, oh, what are you watching your figure? And I was like, yeah. Why is that such a negative thing? Someone's like, oh, you're watching your figure. Yeah, I'm watching how big my human is. I'm watching to make sure that I don't keep growing in the ways I don't want to. Like, that's that's a negative. People think like, oh, oh you're dying. Well, you, what are you dying? You're trying to watch your figure? Like, yeah, you should too. You shouldn't just eat what... What are you trying to be healthy? Yes. What? <laughs> I mean, that's such a weird, like, thing to shame somebody for. That you're trying to be healthy. I don't know. I It's not... Like, I didn't even start taking salads because I'm trying to be healthy. I mean, I am trying to be healthy, but I'm trying to just pack a fucking lunch... And I'm not great at making sandwiches um, that are not... I don't know when to stop with a sandwich. Like, if I start making a sandwich, I don't know how to just stop putting shit. Like, when I'm when I'm going in, I forget that there's the other slice of bread that I'm eventually going to have to put on top and slice this thing in half all the way through. You know, I'll put like, all right, this this half of the bread... It's going to get mayo and mustard, maybe a little, you know, and then it's got a nice piece of uh, maybe some butter lettuce on there. Good, great lettuce. And then we start layering in turkey and I'll put like three slices of turkey right on top of the lettuce and then and then cheese and then some more turkey. And then I get so I start going insane. I start like taking terra chips or some, you know, kettle chips or something. I'll start crushing them up for a little bit of crunch, you know, and I put that on the sandwich, and then we maybe go another lettuce, and then one more cheese, and then the other side gets, uh, fucking, um, you know, mayo and, and mustard and whatnot, god, I'm fucking sick, ugh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry this just sounds horrible, I promise next week it will not sound like that, I won't sound just like some fucking nasally, asshole dude there's some people that just sound like this all the time isn't that terrible what a horrible existence i don't think you like i don't know something i learned in voice training like in when i was in acting school like you don't have to sound the way you sound in terms of like the quality of your voice like people who like people who talk like this all the time, like, and they just have so much glottal fry. Yeah. Like, you don't have to fucking sound like that. That is you having, you have a lazy, soft palate, and you're not opening up your throat enough to get the words out and to get the air out because you're just, you're just so. 
It just so child. It can't even be bothered. It's pink. That's how some people sound all the time. And then some people become friends with those people. And who's worse, you know? This cocktail's good now that, like, it's been, you know, some a little bit of the ice is melted, you know? I don't like a watered-down cocktail, but sometimes you mix the ice in just a little bit. takes a little bit of the bite out, but still, then you get more of the flavor. You get that with an old-fashioned, you know? Like, I don't... An old-fashioned, it's my favorite cocktail, and, like, it's not the... To me, in my opinion, it's not the best as soon as you get it. Like, when it's still all alcohol and it's bitter you know you need a little you need the ice cube to melt a little bit before you start really getting the all the all the good in my opinion i don't know um yeah it's fucking uh it's fucking crazy crazy week um did you guys hear what China is uh, is doing? Like all the stuff that they just banned. I've been following, um, I've been trying to follow this Taliban thing, you know, because that that could that could lead somewhere. Um, they tried to do like a woman's march over there, apparently, and they were just like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> it's in, it's very interesting. Because remember the Taliban, they came out and they're like, no, we're different, I swear. We're going to be totally chill. We're like modern or whatever. And then that just got, you know, shut down real quick. But there's like these, you know, 20-year-old people, these 20-year-old girls who have like no concept of what it was like 20 years ago when the Taliban were used to be in control. And so they're just, like, used to what Taliban was like, or, you know, used to what Afghanistan was like through the past 20 years, which sure wasn't great, but it wasn't what it was like when the Taliban were running things. And so the Taliban come in, and they just see, like, they just see the Taliban as, like, these jerky dudes. They're like, wait, what? What do you want to do? You want to take what rights away? Psh. I'm sure they don't sound like that. So they staged a march, which is incredibly brave and 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 I would not do it. <laughs> I mean, the Taliban are, are known to execute people for less and to yeah, to stay I think they like went up and like went up right to where the Taliban head I don't know headquarters is. They don't really I almost said White House. They don't have a White House, but it's probably a tan shack of a something. I don't know. And they were just like, We want our rights back or or, or something like that. Or and then the Taliban just like fired AKs into the air and they were like, All right, never mind, maybe we'll we'll talk later. Like I mean I'm I'm just very thankful that nothing like it wasn't just a horrible terrible scene it's fucking crazy what's going on over there it's horrible i mean the taliban need to be stopped is that can you say that is that a thing you could say that the taliban need to be stopped i don't know i don't want another fucking huge ass war to start but like I don't know. I, I just didn't read enough to understand why things happened the way they happened. Like, why did we leave so quickly? Why did we get to the point where we left, what was it, fucking however many millions or billions of dollars worth of equipment over there? We're leaving fucking dogs in the crates. Or like, what? What, ha- what happened? I don't know. I haven't read an article. All I know is... One day they were like, we out. And they left. They dropped everything. They dropped, They left everything and just bolted like a fucking house party when the cops show up, you know? Yo, cops, cops, dip. And then everyone just like fucking dipped out the back and hopped the fence. And one guy's shoelace got caught and he fucking busted his face on the fence. That's how we left Afghanistan. You know what I mean? 
oh shit, cops, the parents are home. Like, I don't know. See, it couldn't feel, it felt like it could have been a, a bit more graceful. As far as I, you know, can tell. The only difference is, you know, in the house party analogy, they left the house shittier than than when the incoming parents will keep the house. Whereas this is the opposite. Whereas I feel like when the troops were there, it probably was functioning a bit better than when the Taliban come in. Again, I don't read. So, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, and then I was reading this fucking, to, to circle back to China, I was reading this Chinese, it wasn't a Chinese article, but it was an article about China where they're basically, they're banning talent shows like off the air, pretty much. Like the, you can't do these talent shows because they think they just promote like sissy dudes. <laughs> That's the That was the gist of it, that they just promote sissy, weak men and that they should be, uh, it goes like against uh, masculinity and they want to promote masculinity, which if you want to promote masculinity... I feel like it's weird to promote and just just whatever what what do the people want? It's fucking entertainment. It's talent. It's 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 a horseshit show anyway, most likely. But China thinks that like cele- like using your celebrity to influence and it's basically everything the fuck we do over here in America. They they just think that's all horseshit that you shouldn't use fame uh you know to make money or or to spread a a message that doesn't agree with china or whatever they basically just want you to fall in line because these shows are getting so popular where they have basically more influence of, to people than the fucking uh xi ping ping whatever the guy's name is that leads that place i don't know that's fucking close i'm going to look it up so i don't sound disrespectful but what's his name xi ching jinping i was fucking close but yeah, so they uh, these are the ter- I'm going to read through some of the terms that they went through um, as a part of this like new thing that they're they're banning. Um, then the first one: boycott illegal or immoral personnel when selecting entertainers and guests, radio, television, and entertainment platforms. They should not employ people who have an incorrect political stance, break laws and regulations, or speak or behave against public order morals. I mean, who have an incorrect political stance? There, there is a right political stance and there is a wrong political stance. Can you imagine if we did that over here? If we had to one day decide, hey, what's the right one? <laughs> what's the, cor- or, or I shouldn't say right, I should say, what's the correct political stance? That's basically what they're doing over in China. Um, boycott traffic only standards. Idol selection shows cannot be shown, as well as shows starring the children of celebrities. Shows should strictly control voting and cannot induce and encourage fans to shop or buy merchandise in order to vote for their idols. I don't really understand that when we're going to skip it. Boycott an overly entertaining trend. Promote traditional culture. Establish a correct beauty standard. Boycott, in, in quotes, sissy idols. Boycotting daunting wealth, gossip, or vulgar internet celebrities. Like... This whole K-pop and, like, reality and just, you know, celebrity thing, that's not a, they, they, they're like, China's like, what? No, get it out. Get it out. It's so funny, like, the government, and, and they're just like, we want to go back to traditional masculine fucking, you know, things. Dude, bring them over here. Hollywood can't get, are you kidding me? Sissy Asian dudes? Hollywood would eat that up right now. Send them over here. China, send us your sissy dudes, and we will put them, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put them in the next uh, fucking dating uh, reality TV show or something. You know? They have to regulate showbiz staff, enforce licensing television hosts, provide professional moral training. Entertainers should not use their professional and fame to gain profit. Then why the fuck would you do it? Reality television, you know, in particular. 
like if you enjoy what you do then do it but like why would you why would you do reality television if it wasn't for the money and fame other you'd have to be an insane person everyone on these fucking reality tv shows in america is doing it you know they know it's not going to last more than one season most likely and they're just trying to be a psycho on that show to gain popularity and get instagram followers so they can just become an influencer i mean it's literally the whole fucking point I mean, that's what, that's every, every reality show we've ever done. Look at Survivor. I watched fucking, you know, however many goddamn 30 seasons of that thing. And you see like the popular ones, they've just converted, they shifted their lane and they gained a huge following on Instagram. And now they do, now they sell fit tape or whatever it is. It's a smart move. It's the only move. Otherwise, what the fuck is the point? You're so, you're a celebrity for being nothing, for doing nothing, for just being an asshole. And so, you know, I guess that's why they're banning it. I don't know. I don't understand China. I don't pretend to. Uh, la, 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 la. Regulators need to be more accountable, listen to the people and respond to their concerns, fill public space with positive and mainstream shows. Mainstream shows. Whatever. Who decides what the mainstream is? I'll tell you who. Xi Jinping. Ping. That's his name. I just looked it up. And I just, I just said it 100% correct. He decides what the mainstream is. So, you know, I know things aren't perfect over here. But it, it, just, it just, again, it's all perspective, huh? When you got Xi Jinping and you got the Taliban over there, you just got to keep it all in perspective where, yes, things are not perfect here. Yes, things to meet, need to be improved. But overall, pretty good, I guess. And this is not to sound insensitive in the wake of what whatever the fuck just happened in Texas. Again, I don't read, but I understand it has to do with ladies and abortions. Um, again, didn't read, but that should be the name of this fucking podcast. I didn't read. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Uh, if anyone would like to explain any of these things to me, please feel free to reach out. Other than that, that's it. That's the podcast this week. Like I said, I was a little down. I know I sound nasally. This is probably terrible to listen to if you're still listening. Um, but, you know, I'm fucking sick. And we got a schedule to keep. And I can't stop because, uh, you know, the green guy from the Musinex commercial decided to break my lungs and throat. So, um, that's it. That's the podcast. We'll see you next week. Have a good week. Stay golden. Peace.